of the Merchant Marine. Heroes of the Merchant Marine, the thrilling true stories of the men who are heroes aboard ship. A program salute to our men who serve and live for their country by sailing the world's seaways to deliver to our troops and allies the vital supplies of a victorious new world. The Merchant Marine is a series of programs dedicated to America's brave merchant seamen, the everyday common men who are heroes every day they sail the pathways of the world. These are true stories with Ray Lewis as narrator and transcribed from the confidential files of the War Shipping Administration. is the story of Captain Carl William Janicki, Master Mariner. Lower away, bosun! Just one more boat, Hardy. The ship's still going down? Aye, sir. Slowly, sir. Very slowly. But she's going down nevertheless. Last boat's ready. Just the gun crew on us. That's all that's left, sir. And the ship's settling, almost half in the water. Well, if the sub's not around, then we're not running. We leave the ship, right? Right, sir. Let's get in, then. Now you're standing up here being sentimental. Gun crew! Abandon stations! End of the life, boss, will you? All set, Hardy? All ready, sir. Well, end of the boat. May you go down easy, West Hardaway. May you go down easy. Lower away! Hello, away, man. Wait! Sir? Wait! Look! There's a ship there. Don't pull away yet. Look, Hardy, look close. The ship. Yeah? He stopped settling. She stopped settling. You know what that means, Hardy? What, sir? That means we're going aboard. And we're going to man our guns. And if we can't get those engines to move, at least we can wait for the next Nazi pig boat to show its ugly snout above the water and blast the rotten thing back to the bottom of the sea where it came from. That's what it means, Mr. Hardy. Gun crew! Get on those lines. Get back to your ship. Follow me. We're going to give the Nazis a surprise party. We're not giving up our ship. Not by a long sight. This is the story of that captain who wouldn't give up his ship and who planned a little surprise party for a German sub. His name is Carl William Jonicky. Master Mariner of the United States Merchant Marine, Captain of the SS West Hardaway. And in between voyages, when he's home in Philadelphia, he's quite a handsome sight when he and his wife go for their quiet walks down the neighborhood streets. The four gold stripes on his sleeves and the golden scrambled eggs on the visor of his officer's cap seem to blend well with his solid 6'2 frame his ruddy, sharp-featured face, and his gray hair. He and his wife spend most of his leaves taking long, leisurely walks, during which he tells her about the big and the little things that went on during the last voyage. And she tells him about their home and about her rationing troubles and how their two-year-old grandson can say Grandpa is a big captain 
and how he should take those pills the doctor gave him regularly while at sea. And he promises and proceeds to forget all about it. Yes, Captain Carl Janicki liked his leaves in Philadelphia with his wife in between voyages. But once he's on his ship with a new cargo loaded and a new course charted and a new port as is their destination, there's an old yet very new light in his pale blue eyes. A light which any seagoing man will recognize. For in it is the love of his second home, the sea. We had just landed in Normandy and were stalemated around saint Lô. Our troops needed supplies and needed them right away. There was still the chance that the Nazis would push us back into the sea. And our men in Normandy needed supplies and needed them desperately. Captain Janicki's quiet visit in Philadelphia was suddenly interrupted. His ship, the West Hardaway, was speedily loaded. And soon they were at sea, headed for Normandy, heavily crammed with vital supplies. They were only two days away from the French coast. So far, there had been no sign of Germany's quickly vanishing undersea force. It was ten o'clock on a very brightly moonlit night. Captain Janicki had just come onto the bridge. The tour of inspection when suddenly... Submarine surfacing on starboard bow! Captain Janicki leaped to the public address microphone and shouted his orders to the crew. Battle stations! Man your battle stations! Gun crew! Open fire! Open fire! And don't cease firing till you see her go down! struck the first blow and hit the West Hardaway hard. Too hard. Where did they get us, Hardy? Number three hole, sir. Go down there and check the damage and report right back to me. Aye, sir. Here comes another one. Missed. Missed by ten yards. We can't expect luck like that all night. Check on that number three hole, Hardy. Aye, sir. Gun crew! Commence firing! We're not going down yet! Keep firing till you get that sub and don't stop for anything. The sub started to submerge, but the gun crews wouldn't stop firing. Only a few feet of that Nazi conning tower were above water when the... There were telltale explosions that told the men of the West Hardaway that they'd had their revenge. As Captain Janicki looked with satisfaction at the widening circle of oil marking the grave of that German sub, Hardy came running up to the bridge. Captain, sir. There's a hole big enough for number three for a sub to go in through. We're settling, settling slow, but sure. We're going down. I know. Look at the bow. Look. Even while you're talking. Yep, it's almost in the water. It's the only thing to do. <laughs> Abandon ship! With every man aboard the West Hardaway hating the job, the ship was abandoned. Lifeboats were filled and lowered away. Captain Janicki saw that the job was carried out well. And when the job was almost finished... Just one more boat, Hardy. The ship's still going down? Aye, sir. Slowly, sir. Very slowly. But she's going down nevertheless. Last boat's ready. Just the gun crew and us. That's all that's left, sir. And the ship's settling. Almost half of her in the water. If a sub's not around, then we're not running from her if we leave the ship. Right? Right, sir. Then let's get in. No use standing here being sentimental. Gun crew! Abandoned stations into the lifeboats, will you? You're all set, Hardy. All ready, sir. Well, into the boats. May you go down easy, West Hardaway. May you go down easy. Lower away! Pull away, man. Wait, sir. Wait, look. The ship. Don't pull away yet. Look, Hardy, look close. The ship, she stopped settling. She stopped settling. You know what that means, Hardy? What, sir? That means we're going aboard. And we're going to man our guns. And if we can't get those engines to move, at least we can wait for the next Nazi pig boat to show its ugly snout above the water and blast the rotten thing back to the bottom of the sea where it came from. That's what it means, Mr. Hardy. Gun crew, get on those lines. Get back to your ship. Follow me. We're going to give the Nazis a surprise party. We're not giving up our ship. Not by a long sight. Back to their stricken ship went the crew. Not to sail away, but to fight. To wait for the enemy. 
wait with loaded and ready guns. And every man of the West Hardaway realized that in wartime, a cargo ship is a warship and must do its share of fighting with the rest of them. And so, with the bow of their ship half submerged in water, the captain and his crew returned to their ship to wait for more Nazis. Submarine off port bow! Gun crew, open fire! The sub surfaced about 500 yards from the merchant ship and returned the Hardaway's fire. It was a pitched battle. Stricken ship and sub, their guns blazing. The sub weaved around the ship. The Hardaway's deck guns kept pouring out shells that kept the sub at a distance. For an hour, the pitched battle raged without a letter. Nazi sub, an American merchant ship, trading blazing blows face to face. And then the sub was forced to submerge. And within seconds... Another torpedo had hit home, and the entire forward deck of the valiant fighting ship crashed in. Captain Janicki and his men had fought all they could. The ship was going down too quickly to think of anything else but... Abandon ship! Abandon ship! Ten men to the boat! Get away from those guns, boys! It's a matter of seconds for the ship. We've given them all we have. We can't do any more. Step lively now. Trying hard not to look back at his dying ship, Captain Janicki equalized the 50 men and his crew between the lifeboats. And all were quickly lowered away. They headed for the nearest land, following the captain's calculations. And two days later, they were sighted off the tiny bit of French coast then held by the Allies. They had lost not a man. After all, Captain Carl William Jonicky was a master mariner. And for proving so nobly his right to that high rank... The President of the United States presented Captain Janicki with the Merchant Marine Distinguished Service Medal with this citation. For distinguished service in the line of duty, two torpedoes were fired, one hitting the number three hold on the starboard side and the other a miss streaking across the bow ten yards away. And then the citation told the story of the heroic return to the stricken vessel and the gallant fight with the second undersea Nazi raider. The story which you have just heard. And it ends by saying... Captain Janicki's determination to fight for his ship until the end and his capable leadership of a well-trained crew were in keeping with the finest traditions of the United States Merchant Marine. For the president, signed Emery Scott Land, chairman. Carl William Janicki, Master Mariner, which you have just heard, was one in a series of Heroes of the Merchant Marine. Program salutes to our brave merchant seamen as transcribed from the confidential files of the War Shipping Administration.